My goal today is to help you power up your social media without making your head hurt. Okay. So when I when Cynthia first started talking about doing this session, um, <laughs> powering up your social media, I said, "How many hours do I have?" <laughs> no, seriously. And um, and she, <laughs> so we finally compromised, and she'll tell you more about that later. But for today, I have about 20 minutes. So I'm going to give you two frameworks and 10 tools. It's a good start, okay? <clears throat> All right. What do I mean when I say framework? Okay, so much of the hype around social media is, are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? How are you using this? How are you using that? I want you to just back up a little bit, okay? Because the first framework is, what are you saying? Are you talking about your product? Are you talking about your service? Are you promoting your kids' soccer team? That has to come first, okay? And of course, we're talking about business here. For personal stuff, you can be all over the map. But for business, start with the first framework, which is what is it that you are putting out there, okay? The second framework is how are you delivering that content that you decide you want to put out there? Let me just stop here and say I will give people this presentation and, and I'll do a voiceover so that you'll have it as a sort of webinar kind of thing. So mm -hmm. you don't have to take you know, copious notes if you don't want to. Um, you can just gaze at the beautiful font that is there. <laughs> uh, okay, second framework is how are you going to put this content out there? Now, this is so important. The how is not the Facebook or the Twitter, okay? I'm going to talk to you about this, how do you deliver content, okay? The networks that you use are part of it, but they're not the most important part of it, okay? And then the third framework, I'm going to give you two frameworks today. The third one I want to introduce you to is what I call deputizing your visitors, which is basically the content that you are putting out there, deputizing them to re-share it, okay? That I can't even give you a synopsis of in 20 minutes. Okay, but I do want to let you know that is sort of the third part of what I think is important in terms of content. Okay. Framework one, the type of content you are putting out there. You can come up with a lot of different categories for this. I have, in my infinite wisdom, uh, sort of narrowed it down into four buckets because for, I'm a systems thinker. And I like when things are linear and they, and the, you know, if I set up buckets of things and they fit neatly in there, it's easier for me to replicate it over and over. And when you talk about the time suck of social media, I think this is your first step to getting your sanity back because if you don't, if you haven't come up with buckets of your own, you can use my buckets, okay? So the four buckets are short post, long post, say, and show, okay? So the type of content you're putting out there, is it something you can say in a few sentences? Okay? That's a short post. Don't worry about where the short post is going to go just yet. Just think of it as a short post. Okay? Can you say it in a paragraph or two? And if it needs a visual, can you do it maybe with one, just one picture? We'll call that a long post. Is it something that is best explained? Can you talk for three, five, or seven minutes or more and have people hear you and they'll get it, okay? Or is it something that you need to visually demonstrate and an image won't do it? It needs to be video, okay? Most things that you're going to put out there will fall into one of those four buckets, okay? We were on a conference call setting up this event for you today and all strategizing and for some reason I was eating watermelon and um, and watermelon became my go-to example so <laughs> good thing I, I don't know if I had been doing something else it might not have worked very well. Uh, so example contents are if, short post um, for, you know I'm, I own a watermelon stand and the content I want to put out there is watermelons are in season that's all I want to say I just want to tell people watermelons are in season okay <laughs> My long post might be a great watermelon recipe. I can't do it quickly, 
but I don't necessarily need to do it with audio or video. I just need more space and text to do it. Okay? If the passion with which I say it is what I think is going to sell it, then I want to tell people why I love watermelons and you should too. That might be a podcast. Okay? But again, all we know right now is you want people to hear your voice. That's going to be your delivery method. And then finally, of course, show is how to choose a good watermelon at the supermarket. Do you guys know this? How to choose a good watermelon? I saw this on YouTube. Yeah, it, it, you look for that discolored part because that means it sat in one place and got really ripe. Most people avoid those because they think something's wrong with them. Oh, no, yeah. those are the best watermelons. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And if someone had told me that in a short post or a long post or if I'd listened to them say it, it would not have been as impactful as watching the video where they go, look for this on the watermelon. Okay? So using these kind of cheesy examples, think about in your business, what bucket your content's going to go in. Okay. Now this is a lot of jabbity jabber that I'm going to explain to you. Framework number two, duplicate or syndicate. Okay, this is probably the most technical part of what I'm going to talk to you about today. If you have questions, great. I, I really tried to simplify this as much as possible, but I, I don't want to dumb it down to the point where it just it isn't relevant. Um, let's take duplicate first. Okay. Let's say there are seven places that you have accounts for, okay? And they cover a broad range of short post, long post, audio and video, okay? If you want to talk about how to choose a good watermelon at the supermarket, do you create a short post to go in the short post places? And longer posts to go in the longer post places. A podcast for those places and a video for those places. Okay? That means you're generating a range of different content. Okay? And you're creating content specific to that bucket for that channel, for that type of channel. Okay? Opposite of that is syndicate. Explaining how to choose a good watermelon at the supermarket is best done through showing. So that's the only kind of content that I'm going to create, is video where I show you how to choose a good watermelon. And then I'm going to syndicate that on, if I put, if I have my one network with the video, I'm going to syndicate the content in the other six networks and drive people to the place where the content is. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. This is really key. Okay? All right. In duplicate, all the channels are A channels because each channel is getting some of your attention. Okay? Because you're creating content for that channel. In syndicate, you have A channels and you have B channels. A channels are the ones you create content specifically for that format. And the B channels are where you just let people know that there's something on an A channel that they should go check out. Okay? Um, most of the time suck comes because people are here. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you start out here, it will take a lot of time. You may have a product or service that requires that. What I encourage you to do is Try and move here and see how your audience responds. Because what you may need to do is, again, with my seven channels, maybe I picked the wrong one to be the A channel. So there's going to be, have to be a lot of testing and monkeying to see which should be the A channel and which should be the B channel. Okay? All right, so here is my wet blanket moment. This is what <laughs> Cynthia calls my wet Because Cynthia gets so excited about this and that. And I say, okay, which part of our strategy does that fit into? She's like, I don't know, but isn't it cool? <laughs> and then, yes, Every it's day cool. Say that. Yes, it's cool. <laughs> yes, it's really cool, but I don't, I don't think it has a 
place in any of our buckets, Cynthia. Um, although today she had a good one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so don't want to blank it on that one. Okay. They are, I, when my first job in Washington, I worked for this, in 2000, I worked for this consulting firm in Georgetown. And I had one of those guys who was literally, like, this was before the office, but he was D Dwight Schrute. <laughs> before, I'm not kidding, before there was a Dwight Schrute. And he was very particular about the words strategic and tactical. Okay? Most people use these interchangeably. But they're different. Okay? And so, I always think of him. Um, your tools are your tactics. Okay? They don't mean anything until you've got your framework one, which is what type of content, and your framework two, which is your delivery, okay? The tools are the tactics of delivery, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I'll give you some examples. Short post, obviously. Twitter, Facebook. And one that you may not have thought of, but and, and I actually didn't necessarily think of until I saw other people Popping up on the side of my uh, on the side of my Gmail screen was your IM status, which is you know you have the chance to post a little message there. I look at those all day long, and so you know someone says like I'm having roast beef for lunch, but this one spa that I was communicating with because we were working on a Nalbo event together, she was like, I'm working on a new book for blah blah blah, and I was like, oh, that's a great place to put a short post. So if you are an IMer, and if you're not already on Gmail, I encourage you to be on Gmail. I could go on and on about how you just go ahead, you need to go ahead and drink the Gmail Kool-Aid, <laughs> <laughs> or the Google Kool-Aid in general, because it's just good stuff. Um, okay, now I'm going to quiz you. Long post. Blog. Okay, so blogs, definitely. Facebook, Facebook. notes page. Okay, so I didn't... I. Didn't put it up there, but but yes. So Facebook now has this op you know, to, to do yeah. these longer mm -hmm. uh, notes, I guess you would call them. It's kind of the equivalent of a blog on your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of us have them linked. Just notes. notes. Just called notes. It's over on the left-hand side of your Facebook page. Okay. Anything else? Did you say that? Think about it. Where on the web do you already have an account with, or do website. you use your website? Your website, your website definitely. Website. <laughs> <laughs> How about Google Buzz? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about Quora? So Quora is a place for you to be super fancy pants about whatever it is that you do for a living. Other people ask questions. And you answer. Okay? And anybody can do it. It is, what would you say? Oh, sorry. Um, it's basically, it's on Quora, if someone says, okay, I'll give you an example. When Jennifer had her background up about of, um, the Pepsi page and the Martha Stewart page, and mm -hmm. I was just dying to say, oh, it's so easy to create this, because all you have to do is right click on your website and choose save background image and then download that image and then upload it to your YouTube channel and that is your, yeah, that's just definitely the starting point and depending on how your website is designed, that can be your YouTube brand. So that's the kind of thing I would go on Quora and it's sort of the, um, it's kind of a reverse Q&A in that you don't wait for people to ask you questions, go and find people who have questions and then answer them for them and so you establish your authority. Also, like also with LinkedIn discussions, and LinkedIn groups, when people are posting discussions in LinkedIn, that's an opportunity to do the same thing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, how about, um, oh, I didn't go over IPDS. Um, I couldn't, because we can't pull up websites, I, if you want to see this afterward, I'll pull examples up on the iPad. Um, long post is basically the web version of what, like a white paper, <laughs> yeah? The way that you can do this on your website are things like Issue, or Scribd, or um, Google actually has an app too, although I, I like Issue the best. Basically, it's a way to create a flipping book on your site. So instead of just having someone download a, a Word document or a PDF, 
and then maybe they print it out, or maybe it just sits on their desktop, or maybe they open it up and read it. It just it flips for that. And you can highlight content, and perhaps most importantly, it is search engine optimized. So that every word in that document, Google and Bing and Yahoo can find it. Which it isn't if you just stick a PDF on your site. Okay? Is that IPDFs? That well, that's what I call IPDFs, but um, it's basically a PDF that you uh, can make interactive through different apps and things. Just search for interactive PDFs. And I have a sample on a client site that I'll show you. Okay, say. Podcast. Okay, definitely podcasts. What network might you use? Okay. You know what iTunes is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not just bands and songs and university professors, okay, uh, in terms of the podcast section. Anybody can have a iTunes channel, okay? If you are new to YouTube channels, I'm guessing you probably didn't know about iTunes channels. It's just as easy to set one up, okay? And um, I think iTunes works best in conjunction with Screencast because when you record an audio file, it, it, I am a PC person. To be a designer, I'm rare because I'm a PC designer. Um, every PC from definitely XP and Vista and now with Windows 7, um, comes installed with something, assuming it has the Windows operating system installed, comes with something called a sound recorder. And it's just a little thing that you just find it in your programs menu and you just pop it open. And you just, assuming your computer has a microphone, or you plug one in, you just start talking. And it saves the correct format for you. Okay? And then, if you, you can upload it straight to iTunes, or you can upload it to Screencast, okay? The thing I love about Screencast is that it's, you can share it with people privately, or you can auto-syndicate it to iTunes for free, oh, no, I'm sorry, yeah. It's, it's free for you to seek it, but you can choose to give it away on iTunes, or you can sell it on iTunes, okay? So again, with the saving time, you don't need, if you go through Screencast, you don't need to set up iTunes separately. Screencast will take you through the iTunes channel process. If you go through iTunes directly, it, it has this long page with like 18 steps about how to set up your channel. I thought it was confusing. So mm -hmm. maybe avoid that. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to have to give Cynthia credit for this. Cynthia turned me on to Cinch, and I'm just going to let her, if, if, if you were checking your Facebook before you came here today, you may have seen. She ambushed me as I was working on the presentation. I had Velcro rollers in my hair. And so she came in, and we did a quick podcast. She uploaded it to Facebook and then syndicated it out to Twitter, okay? And boom, it was done. It took like three minutes. Just, I don't have time. She's like really mad at me. I'm gonna play it here real quick. She was like, just like three minutes. She was like, just like three minutes. Just come upstairs. I heard it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I can't quite hear it, but yeah. But it said okay. Amy Kim was really mad at me for interrupting. But I got a picture of her working on a presentation with rollers in her hair. <laughs> and I posted it. Yeah, and I have to say, Amy so, and Jennifer saw it. Maybe yeah, so I was it. very impressed. I was like, okay, that is a really good, good idea. idea. That, that's a really hot one in California, I found out. So I usually find if they're really big out there, it'll start it's really making its way out here. If yeah. you decide that you have a lot to go in that say bucket, I definitely think you should. Oh, and the other thing I should mention is this is an app. Cinch is an app. The rest of these are websites. Cinch is an app. It's a website too, but it's an app that you use on your phone. It's definitely for iPhone, but I didn't, I don't know if there's an Android version. I'm not sure. I think there may be. I don't know. Probably, probably will I'm be. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But then again, I just learned about this this afternoon. Mm -hmm. so. Pardon me for not doing my due diligence. But I was, when Jennifer responded, I go, darn, I always want to try something Jennifer hasn't seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. 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 And lastly, show YouTube, Vimeo, there are a lot of video channels. Okay. 
All right, very quickly, I am, again, such a wet blanket when it comes to Twitter. I, I don't think Twitter is as exciting as a site. I think it has a good place as one of your B channels, okay? And, you know, when people first started getting into Twitter, it was, oh, I've got to have my YouTube, I, got, I mean, i got to have my Twitter background, and I want to fool with my colors, and if you are tracking analytics, on your Twitter page, you know, people aren't going to your Twitter page. That doesn't mean your feed isn't popular. It doesn't mean your tweets aren't interested. People may be reading those, but people aren't going to twitter.com slash pink color ink, but once in a blue moon. We do have a lot of followers. We have people interested in our content, but they're not going to our page, okay? Okay, let me show you that. Oh, one question. Okay. I thought this was fascinating. The difference between 2001 and 2011, the, the amount of people who know about Twitter and will trust the content when they see it, it has grown exponentially. The amount of people that use Twitter, eh. Okay? Now when I say use Twitter, I mean, if we want to talk about the amount of people who have Twitter accounts, that would be a bigger bar. The amount of people who have Twitter accounts, the amount of people who have used Twitter, different. 42% of people who sign up for Twitter never return. Because they don't know what it is. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, so on Twitter you are pink color pink. I am I am K. Yes. I'm tweet. Oh yes. whether you like it or not. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah I don't mean to poo poo Twitter. I I just want to show you how to syndicate your Twitter content and not necessarily rely on people